Hello, welcome to our Advent Midweek Worship. I'm Pastor Becca Ager France from Lutheran Church of Our Savior in North Chesterfield, Virginia, and I'm glad that you've chosen to worship with us this evening. If you'd like to follow along, you can find a bulletin at our website, lcosva.org. Let's begin together. Welcome in the name of the God who gathers us, who grafts us onto the tree of life, and who grows our faith daily. Long ago, a prophet foretold that from a stump, a new sapling would grow. That sapling was Jesus. And though Jesus would stretch up to heaven, he remembered his roots. He called Mary and Joseph, his mom and dad, and they told him about his family tree from Abraham to Zechariah. But that was only half the story. Long ago, a savior died on a cross for us. The dead tree of the cross put out a new shoot and from that shoot a wild bush grows, full of prickly saints and florid sinners, all part of Jesus' family tree, and its name, Church. In the tangled branches of its stories, we learn from generation to generation, God brings new life from what was dead. God surprises people who thought they were prepared. God acts according to long-expected promises, and also, somehow, right out of the blue. Come, divine wonder, astonish us again. of Abraham and Sarah, Rahab and Ruth, Mary and Joseph, and innumerable saints into our midst. You formed these people into a family. As we light our Advent candles, let each flame illuminate the beautiful tangle of saplings that grow from Christ our root, and let us recognize ourselves among them. Amen. A reading from Luke. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. 
They said to her, none of your relatives has this name. Then they began mentioning his father, motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John, and all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was open and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from, all the, hand, and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. This reflection comes from Barn Geese Worship's Out of the Blue Midweek Worship, and it was written by Victoria Larson. In this gospel story, Zechariah and Elizabeth seem to represent doubt and faith, respectively. Zechariah gets an angelic visitation announcing the birth of his son and wonders how. Elizabeth gets pregnant and said, this is what the Lord has done for me. Eventually, Zechariah moves to stand beside his wife in her unwavering faith. His written proclamation, his name is John, reaffirms the truth of the angel's message. It's true for him and true for his neighbors. God has looked favorably on God's people and set them free. Zechariah now speaks of God's action in the past tense. He no longer wonders how God's promises will be fulfilled. He rejoices that they have been already. This immovable conviction is mirrored in the life of St. Lucy, who was commemorated in the church calendar on December 13th. Lucy was born in Syracuse, a city in modern-day Sicily, in the 3rd century. When she came of age, she decided not to marry, but to devote her life to God instead. She wanted to distribute the money saved for her dowry to the poor, but her mother, Eutychia, resisted. Eutychia was sick and wanted to secure Lucy's future, so she arranged her daughter's marriage to a young man from a wealthy pagan family. When her mother experienced a miraculous, a miraculous healing at the shrine of a nearby Christian martyr, Lucy managed to convince her to give away the dowry after all. When her fiancé found out, he denounced Lucy to the governor of their region. The governor told Lucy to offer a sacrifice to the emperor, but she refused, so the governor ordered her to be sent to a brothel. When the guards came to take her away, legend tells us that they could not move her, even when they hitched her to a team of oxen. They piled wood around her and tried to burn her, but the wood wouldn't catch. Finally, they put her to death by the sword. Lucy's story spread among Christians, and she became a beloved saint, especially in Scandinavia. There, children and teenagers participate in, a Luc in Lucia processions. The person playing the role of Lucia, as she is known in Scandinavia, dresses in white with a red sash and bears a crown of candles. Lucy's name means light, and it's said that celebrating her feast day will help one get through the long, dark winter with enough light. Lucy and the Lucia tradition represent the immovable conviction that the sun will come back, that the world won't be frozen forever. 
holding on to steely hope even when the sun won't rise and the nights are cold and cold, long and cold, is the key to such immovable conviction. Ask Greta Thunberg, a Swedish climate activist. Greta began her activism at the age of 15, spending her Fridays outside the Swedish parliament on a school strike to draw attention to the need for climate reform. Soon, other students began following suit, and in short order, young people were leading the charge for climate activism across Europe, and people have taken notice. A 2019 poll found that in the UK, public concern about the environment soared to record levels. And in 2021, a study found that people who knew of Greta's work had greater intentions of taking collective action to reduce climate change and more faith that those collective efforts might succeed. It turns out that a movable conviction can move a lot of people after all. Let us pray. The Spirit weaves our community together like branches into a circle of care and now calls us to bring to mind the things we carry tonight. As you feel called, please share joys and concerns that you are tending to in the video comments. Beloved, we offer our prayers to God. We pray for the healing and flourishing of creation. Every mountain will sing and every tree will clap its hands. We pray that our leaders would work towards justice and mercy. They will be called oaks of righteousness. We pray that the poor may find refuge and food, safety and care. They will be like trees planted beside streams of water. We pray that the sick may be well. They will bear fruit in due season. We pray for the tangled thicket of the church, for all its saints, past and present. Their leaves will be healing for the nations. O oh Christ, you are the tree of life. All our joys grow from your roots. In your shade, we leave all our cares. Hear our prayers tonight and always. Amen. Beloved friends, you are saplings growing from the tree of life. May the deep-rooted love of God anchor you May the strength-giving grace of God, of Christ, grow you. May the bow-shaking breath of the Spirit stir you. Amen. Thank you.